National Brotherhood of Electrical Workers Hall, Local 58, and we are very proud and happy to have this gathering here tonight with these guests, not only from Chicago, but also from 1937 and Flint. Many other notable uh, labor warriors in this crowd, and we're we're just we're very happy that so many of you have come tonight. Standing next to me is Sandra Williams. Um, I'm the first woman president of this local union, but Sandra is the first woman president of the Metro AFL-CIO. job so Woman power. <laughs> so I am going to turn you over to uh, to Sandra who will introduce who will give her speech and then introduce the folks after her thank you thank you Elaine and thank all of you and I am truly truly happy can't tell you how happy I am to be the first woman president of the Metro Detroit AFL CIO and on their behalf I bring you greetings I am so pleased to be here to celebrate this event. So often labor leaders talk and they give you the gloom and the doom and very few successes. Well, this success is to be celebrated. Um, the Republic workers saw what they had to do, they created a plan, and they actually built a movement, the start of a movement. We have not had the opportunity to do what they have done to really fight since the 1937 strike, uh, sit down uh, strike. So this is our opportunity. Uh, the Republic workers actually reached out to their allies. They contacted their union and they got all kinds of help and support to do what they did. And that's exactly what we need to do. Oftentimes we say, if we fight, we win. Well, definitely, we've got some issues that we've got to fight. One of those issues is the Employee Free Choice Act. How many of you know about the Employee Free Choice Act? It is legislation that President Barack Obama has said that he will pass once it gets to his desk. The trick is getting it to his desk. It is going to take all of us. We have got to come together to do this. This is one of the most important pieces of legislation that I've known in, in my history. The, the Employee Free Choice Act would give the employer, the employees, the opportunity to make the choice. Currently, the employer makes the choice in terms of whether, when a workers want to organize, they get to go with signing the majority checkoff card or whether they have to have an election. There are 60 million folks who say that they would join a union if it were not for the intimidation and the harassment that exists when they do that. And the reason that the employer always picks an election is because it gives them ample opportunity from the time that the employee signs a card saying, I want to be a union member, to the time that that election occurs, there's ample room for them to have one-on-one -on -one meetings to threaten, to fire, to intimidate. So now the Employee Free Choice Act is going to say, let the workers make that choice. The CEOs and corporations have no right to make the choice. It needs to be the workers. strict penalties when, when employers violate workers' rights. It is our right to organize and form a union. And when that right is violated, that Employee Free Choice Act will provide those penalties. In addition, it is always an issue with a first contract. Always. So with the Employee Free Choice Act, 
that legislation will say if you have not reached a contract in a certain amount of time, a mediator will come in and move the parties closer. If that doesn't happen, then an arbitrator, an outside party, will get a chance, get the opportunity, and will have binding arbitration so that that union will definitely get a contract and those workers will be successful. It does not mean that they will get everything they want, but it does mean that they will have a contract. And in today's climate, that has got to happen. Sisters and brothers, we have come to a place in this economy where it is between the haves and the have-nots. There is the middle class is shrinking. Unions built that middle class. Don't let anybody take it away from us. Don't let anybody say that union workers make too much money. It is CEOs and corporations that make too much money. Workers need to have the opportunity to bargain their way into the middle class, not beg or borrow their way into the middle class. And the Employee Free Choice Act will provide that opportunity. It is our best chance. Even for folks who have never, ever been union members, they need to understand that the struggles that these Republic workers went through, the struggles that the 1937 sit-down strikers went through, and all labor unions who have struggled have impacted their lives. If you never have been a union member and never become a union member, the, the whatever you have is based on the unions uplifting the quality and the standards. So you need to have these conversations. Somebody told me that at Thanksgiving this came up at the dinner table, and one of the issues had to do with the fact that the only way that the corporations and employers are attacking us is to say it's not democratic to sign a majority sign-up card. It is democratic. And in addition, the workers can go for uh, a secret ballot. So uh, the only charge that they can make is no secret ballot election. That is not true. Workers can make the choice to have either majority sign-up or a secret ballot. But let it be their choice. So please go out and have this, this conversation with folks. Let people know that we need to support it. Call your legislators. All of your representatives uh, need to sign on and be co-sponsors or at least support the Employee Free Choice Act. It is what the economy needs. Don't let the middle class be eliminated. Get unions in to help bargain fair wages, equitable wages. Please, please have this conversation. Thank you.